The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. She literally took a step of faith and said, well, let me try and walk with some help. Let me try and walk on my own and then ran just knowing God had healed her and she didn't have to worry that she was gonna re-injure herself. God honors faith that is expressed in both risk for him and obedience. Do you want to see more signs and secrets of the Messiah in your life? Rabbi Jason Sobel, next on Life Today. Hi everybody, I'm Tammy Trent and this is Randy Robison. Welcome back to Life Today. I'm so glad to be back again. Honestly, if you missed the show uh, yesterday, we had Rabbi Jason on. He's back again with yep. us today. He has such an authentic voice, Randy. Yeah. Like the way that he connects ancient wisdom to the teaching of the Messiah. Oh yeah. It's a revelation to me. Yeah, I like my like the last program you were just you were like, wow, right? I know. I couldn't even think of a question. I put my <laughs> notes down and I was just zoomed well, right in on Just him. wait, there's more. And by the way, if uh, you missed the other program, it's at lifetoday.org yeah, with that's all right. of our programs. Uh, but we're going to talk through some today that I think really are going to minister mm. to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and Rabbi, welcome back, by the yes, way. Thank welcome. you. It's great to be back. So Thank good you for having me. Okay, so again. Signs and Secrets of the Messiah, that, that's your new book. Yes. And I love, I just love the revelation of the reality of Christ through what you're talking about. And it's always mm -hmm. fun to talk about miracles. Yeah. And the Gospel of John has always been uh, the Gospel that I recommend to people if they're new, yeah. you know, or, and I just, it's just fun to read. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's because of all the things pointing to the divinity of Christ, the signs, mm -hmm. the miracles mm -hmm. that really tell us who He is. There's a couple mm -hmm. of those in John that you really relate to. I, I'd love for you to kind of mm -hmm usher us into these uh, and maybe even tell us how they've played out in your life as you've seen it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the reasons why we wrote Signs and Secrets of the Messiah is that we really want people to find hope mm -hmm. and healing mm -hmm. and wholeness mm -hmm. in Him. Mm -hmm. That's part of the supernatural, miraculous work that Yeshua Jesus does in, in our life. Yeah. And the first one I wanted to chat with you about is the miracle of healing. Yeah. Mm. And the miracle of healing chapters in Signs and Secrets is talking about the man at the pool of Bethesda, mm. John chapter five. Yeah. Here's a man who had been an invalid, hadn't been able to walk 38 years maybe his entire life, or certainly from the time that he was young. And Jesus comes and encounters this man and asks him, do you want to be made well? Mm. And when you think about it for a moment, it seems like a silly question, right. like, do you right. want to be right. made right. well? Like, right. who wouldn't want to be made well? Right. But here's the reality. The reality is that oftentimes, like, and we're going to see this is important, this connects back to the children of Israel who came out of Egypt, mm. right? Oftentimes when we've come out of a season that's been really difficult, where there's been sickness or trauma or pain for a long time, that oftentimes defines our identity. Mm. Right. It becomes so part and parcel of how we feel, how we see ourselves, yep. how we interact with the world, that it's hard to see past that. Mm -hmm. And that was like the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt, right? They're free and they're like, man, we missed the food back in Egypt. Let's stone Moses yeah. and go back because the cooking's better. Yeah. That's like crazy. Mm -hmm. But there was a slave mentality. There was a victim mentality. They, mm -hmm. they were struggling to move out of the past season. They were stuck. And this man was stuck, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when Yeshua asked him, do you want to be made well? He's like, well, I don't have anyone to pick me up when the water mm -hmm. stirs and put me in and the angel. It's not what Jesus asked. <laughs> mm -hmm. He didn't ask, why aren't you well? Right. The question is, do you want to be made well? Mm -hmm. And the reality is hope deferred makes the heart sick. Mm -hmm. 
And what's interesting, a key detail in the story, this man could not walk 38 years. There's a reason why it says 38 years. Hmm. Think about it for a moment. When you ask most people, how long did Israel wander in the wilderness? The, the answer is usually what? 40 years. 40, 40 years. Tr correct, but not totally correct. Israel was in the desert for 40 years, but they wandered as a result of unbelief for 38 years. Really? Wow. Deuteronomy wow. tells us this in the opening chapters. See, two years, God was helping them build the tabernacle. He was giving them the Ten Commandments. He was preparing them and purifying them and healing them to go in and take the land. Yeah. It was in the second year that God says to the children of Israel, go up and take the land, sends the 12 spies in. Oh, okay. They come back with an evil report, says there's giants in the land, the land is good, but there's no way we're gonna be able to take it. And the people lack faith, they don't believe. And because they didn't believe that entire generation wanders in the wilderness. That was 38, 38. years. Wow. This man wow. was representative of the children of Israel who came out of Egypt oh. and because of their unbelief wandered and died in the wilderness. And Yeshua is saying to this man, do you want to be like the 10 spies and that generation who died in the wilderness 38 years because of their unbelief? Do you want to main, remain stuck in the past, stuck? in the past trauma, mm -hmm. whenever there's trauma that's unhealed, there's always drama, drama, right. drama, and drama and trauma go together, right? And so Yeshua's saying, but you don't have to. You can be like the Joshua and the Caleb. You can go in and find healing and possess the promise, but the choice is yours. Mm. What's interesting is 38, so Hebrews alphanumeric. What that mm. means is that there's no numbers, there's no Roman numerals in the Hebrew Bible. The way that you write numbers is with letters. Yeah. So if I say open up to chapter one of your Bible, I say open up to chapter Aleph because Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, so it equals number one. Yeah. So every word has a numerical value. The Hebrew numerical value of his heart, Libo in Hebrew, equals guess what? 38. 38. Because God is saying, Jesus saying, I will heal your heart. Yeah. For the 38 years of the pain and the trauma, yeah. I want to heal your heart. Jesus. I want to make you whole. Jesus. Or you can choose to remain stuck mm -hmm. in your old way of being, in your old way of seeing. Mm -hmm. You can remain stuck in the pain of your past, but if you do, you'll die in the wilderness like the children of Israel. Wow. And all of us have that choice. Absolutely, and I think you're, you're right. Many of us do get stuck in our pain, in our circumstances, and if we hang on to that for a long, long time, it does become your identity. And it's not meant to be your identity, and maybe even asking him, do you, do you want to be healed? What he wants to do, take us from, from that pain, our brokenness, and bring wholeness, healing, fulfillment, that we could live a fulfilled, abundant life. Yeah, and it more. takes a step of faith. Yes, right? you, yes. You have to be willing to, you know, this man could have stayed on his mat, stayed on the ground. Right. Yeshua reaches down in healing and he chooses to get up. Yeah. Okay. He well, takes that step of uh, faith. Be, and faith well, okay. So here's the other yeah. thing is when he asks him if you want to be healed, he's, he's like, yeah, and here's the formula for it. I just can't, <laughs> I can't get there. Mm -hmm. And the answer is standing right mm -hmm. in front of him if he will just believe and mm -hmm. obey. I think a lot of people, and probably some people who are watching right now, mm -hmm. they're in a place where they're stuck. Mm -hmm. They feel like they're wandering in a wilderness. And, and right now, Jesus is saying, do you, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed in your mind? Yeah. The solution is in front mm -hmm. of you. It's Jesus. All these signs are pointing to him. Yes. Believe, obey, and if you want to talk to somebody, there is a telephone number on the screen where you can call and someone will, will talk with you. But all you need is Jesus. He's the yeah. one that can heal you. He's yes. the one that will take you out of your past, Amen. out of your wilderness. Amen. And Jason, what you bring out in this is just such deep, deep mm -hmm. healing truth. Uh, now, I know you have a you have some experiences with literal <laughs> healing. Yeah. I think the greater healing is the forgiveness of sins, as we yeah. saw in one of the miracles of Christ. 
but you've, you've seen physical healing. Yeah, ab absolutely. I, I think what happens with this, with the invalid 38 years is he's lost hope. Okay. Mm, mm. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. 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 Hope is the belief that your future is going to be better than the past. That's right. Yes. Mm. God wants us to know that our future can be Amen. better than our past. Amen. Oftentimes, we have a hard time believing that. We do. That's the power of these miracles and the power mm. of the testimony, both past, like in the Bible, but also that we experience in our lives. That's right. So. You know, there was this, uh, I've seen this several times, right? There was this young girl who was a cheerleader. She came up to me after I spoke on, gave a message and I talked about God's healing power and mm -hmm. God's ability to do the miraculous. And she's a cheerleader. She was injured, torn ACL. She's the first mm -hmm. person to come forward for prayer. Usually when you pray for people, like you can't tell if they're healed instantaneously, right. but this is very clear either she's healed or not. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> I literally pray, Lord, give me the faith to believe <laughs> yes. for this, right? Yes. Prayed for her and she's like, okay. She puts down her crutches. She has two friends holding her up. She's trying to walk. She said, okay, let me try walking on my own. She walked on her own. The next thing she was running around the sanctuary, the Lord completely healed her. I needed faith to believe God could do it. I literally asked God, give me the faith yes, of this yes. miracle. She needed faith to take literally the man who was invalid. She literally took a step of faith and mm -hmm. said, well, let me try and walk with some help. Let me try and walk on my own and then ran just knowing God had healed her and she didn't have to worry that she was going to re-injure herself. God honors faith that is expressed in both risk for him and obedience. Mm -hmm. And another situation where uh, I had a friend who was homeless in New York. And he was uh, sleeping outside, got frostbite from the knees down, mm. had gangrene. Mm. The doctors wow. told him his legs needed to be amputated. Mm. I was a new believer. I went to the hospital. I just read the book of Acts where I said, okay, God can heal. Laid hands on him. You know, that faith and yes, zeal of a new yes. believer, right? Yep. And said, listen, silver and gold have I none, but I have in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, rise, mm -hmm. take up your bed and mm -hmm. walk. He came to faith. He got healed and he walked out of the hospital. Jeez, and wow. that's what God does. Yeah. There is hope. It doesn't matter 38 years, how long mm. you've been stuck, mm -hmm. how long you've been suffering it, mm. how many times someone has prayed for you and you haven't been healed. You never know. Just one more time of faith and risk and obedience could result in God doing yeah. something miraculous. Here, here's the hard question. Uh, because I, I've yet to find yeah. anything in scripture where Jesus didn't forgive sins. He didn't heal the heart, heal the mind. Uh, and, and that's a, a, an ongoing process of, san of sanctification. But there was an instance where people wanted to see Jesus do the tricks. They, they came to see the miracles. And he, he, without a word, got in a boat and left. Because he wasn't going to be a dog and pony show. Mm. And when you talk about our faith, you talk about we know God can heal. We know he doesn't always heal the body, and really, right. any healing in the body is temporary anyway. Right. What do you? How do you? Uh, how do you align? Sort of the sovereignty of God, and when it yeah. comes to the physical, with yeah. So I think one of the beautiful things is that when He dies on the cross, right? Why does He die on the cross? Well, think about it. How did sin enter the world? The first man and woman stole from the tree took from the tree. So God puts back on the tree, Jesus, mm. for you and me to undo the sin that happened in the very beginning. So when Jesus dies on that cross, he comes to undo the fall, right? Jesus was made manifest in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil and to bring the kingdom. So when he dies, what happens? The kingdom of God begins to break into this reality. Mm. So because he preached the kingdom of God is at hand. He didn't say the kingdom of God is fully come. He said the kingdom of God is here in part. So what that means is right now we are standing in the tension between the kingdom being here and the kingdom not fully here. Mm -hmm. So we straddle two realities, this fallen world and the kingdom reality where there's power and healing 
and wholeness. And so that means because the kingdom has come, healing does happen. Miracles do happen. We can have hope, but because the kingdom hasn't fully come, what it means is miracles don't always happen, mm, but they're possible and available to us right now. But the goal is wholeness. It's yeah. not necessarily physical healing, it's spiritual wholeness, is it not? Because that's what yeah. we see in the, the nobleman's the, There's side. these four, we talk about in the book, there's these four aspects. There's spiritual, which is the most important. There's emotional or inner, right? There's relational mm. and there's physical. F you know, physical is the one of four aspects mm. of this reality of the healing, transformation and wholeness God wants to bring in our life. And this actually connects to another miracle, which is uh, actually a miracle found in John chapter four, which is Jesus heals the noble man's son in Cana of the Galilee. Yeah. There's a royal official, son is sick, comes from Capernaum. I love taking people to Israel, by the way, <laughs> doing yeah, tours. You see all this, right? Love it, love going to the places where the miracles yes. have actually happened. Yeah. Capernaum comes to Cana, says, my son's sick. Would you please come down with me and heal him? Well, here's the interesting thing about that, right? Jesus heals this man's son at a distance. At a distance. What's interesting, he says, my son is sick. Well, the Hebrew word for sick is the word for a man is a chole. What's interesting is that the word for sickness in Hebrew, the root of it, or a hospital in Hebrew is the Beit Cholim, the house of the sick, comes from the word chal, which by the way equals 38, which I back really. to the other miracle. Yeah, yeah. But it means to, the, the root word for sickness in Hebrew means to bore out, to make hollow, or to make empty. Mm. So sickness is a result when something that is there goes missing. Then a vacuum is created. That vacuum creates a space for the sickness and the unhealthiness to be able to enter. Mm. So here's the point. When God creates the world, he creates it to be filled. Before it was filled, it was chaos, it was void, it was empty until God said, let there be light. Mm. When Jesus cast out the demons, he said, listen, casting them out, if you don't fill them with my presence, the demons will come back even worse wow. than before. Why? Because space is created to be filled. Mm. Mm. Either it's filled with God mm. and it's filled with the good things, or it's going to be filled with demonic things or addictions and things that yeah. are unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Now, what's interesting is that I had this, God spoke to me one time and he said, holy, holy, holy. But it wasn't what, it wasn't the Isaiah 6. It was H-O-L-E-Y, H-O-L-Y, W-H-O-L-E-Y. Mm. And what the Lord said to me is that all of us, before we know the Lord, as we come to know the Lord, we have holes in our souls. We have places that where there's void. We have places where there's a vacuum. We've got things that we filled in our lives that are not healthy. All of us have those holes, okay? But he wants us to go from being holy, like holes in our socks, right? <laughs> he comes in and by his holiness, he brings about wholeness mm. in our lives. Yeah. And there's a wholeness in our lives that completely changes who we are. Mm. Yeah, and that's what he wants to do. Yeah, that's the in beauty. Our life. That's the redemptive beauty. Uh, okay, just some. I got a bunch of other points right here <laughs> about these miracles that we did not even get mm. to. And so, Tammy, I, I want people to support the outreach today yeah. and request signs and secrets of the yeah. Messiah. Yeah. So <laughs> when you call uh, to give to the ministry, uh, make sure to re request this book because we want to make sure to get it to you. I'm so grateful for you, Rabbi. I feel like I've just been soaking up so much information today, so much that I need to learn, but you explain it in such a great <laughs> way that I can understand. Uh -huh. So thank you for that. And it, it makes me want to dive in more. And I, I think this book and many of your teachings are going to be great for me to grow in my relationship with Jesus. Thank you for that. I'm oh, so grateful you. for you. We're grateful for you as well. And if you've got just a minute to hang out with us, I want to share something really, really special with you right now. So take a look at this. These are tough conditions. 
These people are living in absolute poverty. I'm sure it's hard to just provide for your family. I don't know what they have. I don't know what their need is. But I love that I don't have to figure it out. God just sends us. He sends us and he says, show up. It's what I do love about Life Outreach. For the many years that I've traveled with them around the world, wherever we see a need, we just jump in, whatever it looks like. We're thinking of kingdom-minded things. We're, we're thinking of saving a life, but saving their very life, their soul. That's, to me, that's the gospel, what it's all about, spreading the love of Jesus Christ and sharing the good news of Jesus. You know, James and Betty started this Christmas Shoes and Smiles years ago. And I think their heart was absolutely about just showing the love of God, especially to these children all around the world. And it's so, so wonderful. The joy they feel getting something brand new. Gosh, it just could change everything for you. Oh my goodness, baby, you need, you need these shoes. These shoes will protect their feet, will keep them from danger, uh, keep them from infection, from injury, from hookworm, and could ultimately lead to death. This is an important need right now all around the world. So if you've, if you've given before, thank you so much. If you've never had a chance to give to this ministry, this part of it, Christmas Shoes and Smiles, then I would encourage you, make the best gift that you possibly can. We want to keep putting shoes on children all around the world. We wanna do it all. It's been a great year. It's been an incredible year of ministry, whether it's been water, whether it's been food, or whether it's been shoes right here. We are so blessed to do kingdom things. And together we are changing the lives of people all around the world. We couldn't do it without you. We love you, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Honestly, I love watching that. It's like the first time I've actually seen it all put together. What a beautiful trip to Central America that I was privileged to go on and meet so many beautiful people and so many people with great need, whether it's us stopping and praying for them or me getting the chance to put on a new pair of shoes. I love this part of our ministry. It brings me so much joy. It brings me a huge smile. And I know that it changes the life of these children, bringing them joy, bringing them a smile, especially at Christmas. I can't think of a better time for us to pour into the lives of, of people, especially children that don't have much of anything but a brand new pair of shoes, Randy. Yeah. I mean, it seems so simple and it doesn't cost a whole lot to do this. No, it's easy. Yeah. But, uh, so here's, you saw the joy on their faces. Yes, yes. I mean, it yeah. lights them up. And we yeah, talk about Christmas being a season of joy. Yeah. My goodness, this is your opportunity to do something that really will bring joy to a child, but also has the potential to, to be a real health improvement. Absolutely. You, know, you, so. you can see some of the danger yeah. of some of the feet and the toes and the cuts. And I mean, yeah. it could actually, and we've heard of many stories before where they have died from that because they, they're not near a clinic or a hospital yep. where they can get care to take care of that. Yeah. So yeah. for us to be able to put on a little <laughs> shoe like this, look, it almost fits me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much fun. And they are filled with, with not just a brand new pair of shoes, but really I think the love of Jesus when we get to love them. They get to know what Christmas is all about. Yeah. And you know, here's, here's how it looks. You can put shoes, brand new pair of shoes that will last a long time. They'll probably actually, the children will probably outgrow them and yeah. pass them down. But you can do that for 10 children right now with a gift of $36. Yeah. And maybe you can give shoes to 20 children or a gift of $72 or 50 pairs of shoes, 50 children for $180. What, what a simple thing, but it's huge to them. Yeah. And there's, there's also one other thing I want to bring to your attention. It's shoes and smiles. And there are many children who, who cannot express any joy mm -hmm. any time of the year because they were born with cleft lip or cleft palate. We're also providing surgeries and a typical surgery is about $500 which is why some of you may want to give a gift of $500 today to provide that corrective surgery. But whatever you can do, many of you can give even more than that. You, you can give 275 pairs of shoes for $1,000 or two surgeries or maybe four or more, whatever. I'm just saying, whatever God's enabled you to do and put on your heart to give this Christmas season, this is your opportunity. 
you can share the love and the joy of Christ through these shoes, through these smiles. Will you do it now? Go online. Go to the phone. Make the gift that God puts on your heart, and let's make Christmas special. Poverty is a killer, and because of it, children needlessly suffer not only from a lack of food and clean water, but also from a lack of things we often take for granted, like a simple pair of shoes. Far too many children living in extreme poverty have never owned a new pair of shoes. And while that may seem minor in light of all their needs, walking with bare feet puts them at risk of life-threatening infections and disease that could lead to crippling consequences and even death. By responding today, you will help secure and make ready 150,000 pairs of Christmas shoes to be shipped and delivered to children around the world just in time for the holidays. Your gift of $36 will help provide 10 pairs of shoes. A gift of $72 will help provide 20 pairs. And a gift of $180 will help provide 50 pairs of Christmas shoes for children in need. As a thank you for your gift of support, be sure to request a beautifully crafted green crystal shoes ornament a treasure to display at each Christmas. With your gift of $100 or more, you may request this keepsake boxed set featuring three of life's crystal Christmas shoe ornaments. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,000 or more to help provide over 275 pairs of shoes or two children with corrective cleft lip or palate surgeries. With this gift, you may request the beautiful bronze sculpture, Consider the Birds. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. I hope you are going online or going to the phone. Make the best gift you can. This is the last week. We've got to wrap this up and make it a beautiful Christmas for so many people. And you know what? You can get yourself an early gift when you request Signs and Secrets of the Messiah. And Tammy, I know this has blessed you. It has. It's been a huge revelation to me. I can't thank you enough for this. Mm, thank you. This almost a fresh start in my life. We <laughs> pray that it's a fresh start for you as well. If you're watching today, dive all in, seek, and you will find. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Life Today. Stay connected with Life Today through your favorite social media. Get access to exclusive content and news from all of the outreaches of life. Subscribe, follow, like, and get the Life Today social media experience. One of the most feared men of South Florida and leader of a notoriously violent gang, the Latin Syndicate, Rene Martinez, now helps others get free. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.